You look terrible. <laughs> and the day before we're due to shoot it, the snow starts falling, and it's like, oh, God. Oh, I see some snow. Let's see if they managed to get rid of it. So we got up the next morning, and th this whole river is frozen, and it was covered with snow. We'll have a little bit of a look around, see what we can do for a shot. So we got um, all the electricians to bring up all the big lights that we had. We got the effects guys to bring out their big fans. We got every heater we could find. And we had the local fire departments up there with their fire trucks hosing down the snow. So we managed to melt away enough of the snow and ice in a couple hours. The thing is, is you know, the snow was melted away, but it didn't necessarily make the water any warmer. And Andy actually had to be flopping around in the water. Okay, I'm going to be splashing around. I'm going to be uh, looking for fish and uh, getting hypothermia. And he had a wetsuit on, but it didn't help. It was absolutely freezing cold. This is, this is Gollum's high point, actually, which is going to be hard to counterbalance with my low point that I'm feeling at this moment. Wow. I mean, all the, work, all the physical work that, I, uh, that I've talked about that I said I did on Gollum kind of completely went out the window when, when I hit the water because uh, it was unbelievably cold. The, the, you know, when Pete pulled action when I first went in, I really, really felt like I'd been, I'd been punched in the chest and my heart felt like it had just stopped working. I was instantly, all, all the extremities just kind of froze up. And I was just literally thrashing about in this ice cold water. I, my mind had gone. I was just numb. I was numb. And he's actually heading towards this, this like 200 foot drop on the edge of a waterfall <laughs> and I was so terrified that somehow the cold would make his brain go numb and he'd just keep slipping and sliding and disappear over the edge so God knows how many times I said to Andy, now don't forget to stop Andy and I actually had a couple of guys positioned down there and I said listen if he if he looks like he's going too far and getting too close to the edge just step in there and grab him. It's kind of the way the whole movie was because there wasn't anything that anybody wasn't willing to try within reason, I mean, just to get the movie done. We never just walked away from something because it was a little more difficult or, or a little harder than it, it could be on a different day. If it was doable, if it was possible, we generally tried to do it. And that's, you know, Pete and Barry and the whole, the whole group. I mean, it just starts from the top down. It was cold, man. It was freezing, but it was the, the energy needed to keep going through, man. Or don't go getting too far ahead. Why do you do that? What? Call them names. Run them down all the time. Someone to be on my right shoulder, it would be Vigo because he just gave everything. His commitment, all his hands, the, the knuckles all had chunks out of it from his sword fighting where no matter how well you planned it, um, you were always getting nicks and, and little abrasions that were very painful. He, he, at one stage, he, he broke his tooth. This very sh hard, solid sword just went crack straight into his front tooth, and Vigo's front tooth snapped off. Kind of this big chunk of tooth just broke off and fell on the floor. He said, don't worry, we'll just carry on. He bent down, he picked up his broken tooth, and he kind of just stood there and he said, Get some super glue. Somebody get me some super glue. We can just stick it back on and carry on shooting. And we said, no, Vigo, we're going to take you to the dentist. We'll get you back here in an hour when they finish lunch, and then we can finish the scene. So we just rushed him off for emergency dental work to get this tooth fixed, because we were obviously freaking out. And up to uh, Pete's dentist and sat, sat in the chair, and all the while he had his sword on and got his tooth fixed and went back to work. It was like business as usual for, for everybody involved, and it's only because it's an actor that you're like, it's even mentioned, I think it's... There were a lot of, you know, I mean, stunt people in, in particular that got hurt a lot worse than, pretty much, than, than any of us. For the Black Gates of Mordor location, we need an area that's a bit like a desert, because New Zealand's a very green country and quite mountainous, so to, to actually find something flat with no vegetation is very difficult, and this area of the uh, desert road is unfortunately the same area as the New Zealand Army do their live firing exercises. Force drop bombs here. These uh, demolitions are done here because this is really the only place in the country that we'd be able to shoot this stuff. Unfortunately, because it's quite soft sand here, there's always going to be a certain amount left behind. The first day that we showed up there to shoot, we were taken into this big tent. This officer of the army came, stood up in front of us as we were all eating our eggs and bacon in the morning or whatever, and just said, 
<laughs> this is a bomb. This is a rocket. This is a... All these things you might find out here. Don't touch them. So there are mines buried in the ground. Don't dig any holes in the ground or don't kick anything or... <laughs> because the army didn't want to be responsible for blowing us up. And we get out on set and you're in the middle of fighting and stuff and you look down and sure enough there's the fins of a bomb sticking out on the ground. And we were filming right in the middle of it, doing a battle sequence, churning up the earth with all of us running around, jumping up and down. You know, constantly through the day, they'd be coming in and, and clearing it away. Mm. I'd rather you didn't capture that on film. They had some tape cordoning off a certain area, but I said, does that mean that inside this tape we're fine? No, but there's less bombs where... <laughs> Where you are then on the other side of that tape. Yeah, no, no, if you go halfway between oh, way there and the pine forest, way yeah, over there. Yeah, now, down. you're not going that far, but that's where you'd be aiming. I was particularly nervous on one shot we did where we had Vigo and one or two of the other actors galloping across the desert towards the Black Gate. And I remember the army had sort of pointed out the zone that they'd cleared. I think that they, they went a little f further than they were supposed to, and I think we were all hoping like hell they weren't going to step on a landmine or something. But they didn't. And they added a little extra tension, added a little more chaos to the already existing chaos of our shoot. It's typical Pete Jackson, you know, he's just... I mean, you could see Pete, like, giggling and, like, loving the fact that we're in this place where, you know, it's, it's like a death zone. Come on! Yeah. yeah. So me and Vigo get in behind the camera so that when, when they turn round and they're looking, at least they're looking at someone they know and they can kind of... You know, imagine they're at a wedding, their wedding, and their friends are there. We provided some, you know, um, off-camera help to him. Hey. Hey. Uh, uh, yeah, my shoe, please. Let's knock it down. Is this helpful? Or? Yeah. I like it. Uh, camera set. <laughs> and then, in one of the takes, they turn around, and I'm like, yay, and Vigo grabs me, and kisses me hard in the mouth. <laughs> I mean, like, I've never been kissed from man or woman. And, by God, I, I saw stars. And I, I think I fell in love for a split second. And then I, I felt a bit sick. Did you see what they did? <laughs> really? You don't know about this? <laughs> no. You never heard this? No. I, th I think, I'm not saying, I think I felt tongue. You, I think you opened your mouth. I wasn't watching. No, he did. <laughs> he did. I can't believe that. Dirty buggers. Seemed to work. The next take, they said, OK, we got it, you know, so. I like the kiss on that one the best. You did? But that was take two. No, 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 there was only one take. That's what Peter said. We're going to tell Christine there's only one take. Oh, oh yeah, it was one right. right. And I don't know if that helped their reaction, but I, I couldn't look at Vigo for a couple of days. Felt dirty. Yeah. And I'd been secretly wanting to do that with Billy, which is a whole nother. Maybe we shouldn't talk about that. He's quite an affectionate man. I was kind of jealous because I remember the first uh, party we kissed each other, remember? Yeah. Remember? I've kissed most of the boys. You have? Yeah. I'll tell you what, Billy Boyd gets himself about. I don't mind. I know for a fact I'll kiss anybody. that he's kissed five members of the fellowship, male members of the fellowship. Not like Liv Tyler, Kate Blanchett, and then a couple of, you know, drunken moments. Five men. Let's go kiss again. 